Welcome to Strip Cover Lit, where we squeeze the bigger picture of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we are here for the latest in the series to be known as the Bookshelf Tour here on Strip Cover Lit. What are we doing today? We are I'm checking my shelves to make sure I haven't left any out. Obviously, you saw the title. Uh, we are going with short stories, uh, collections of short stories, as well as entries to the short story collection by individual authors. As long as it is not the completed works, I will have a separate video. As you see Hemingway behind me, that is the completed short stories of Ernest Hemingway that will appear in a separate video. So, um, we're going to start. Now look, a lot of the entries on this series so far have included me being embarrassed and ruining the fact that I have read so few of the books that I actually own. In this portion of the uh, bookshelf tour, I have read at least a little from, I believe, every entry herein, and I have read oh, all but one, which is ironic when we get to the person who it actually is. Um, but yeah, uh, I've read a little bit at least from all of these books, and I've read all of most of them, the funny thing with short stories and short story collections is there's almost no point in talking about short story collections. They are so varied, they are so different, they are so wide spanning, but I've got some points to make on each kind of short story collection, as well as the fact that I will be ending this part of the bookshelf tour with my absolute Bible of short story collections. If you spend any amount of time on the channel, uh, you've heard me reference this book many, 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 many times um, for many different reasons. And you know, it's funny, it really is funny that sitting here amongst a pile of short stories, a pile of collections of short stories nonetheless, really brings me back to my days as a student, a student of the craft. Um, and one of the reasons one of the things that I feel bad about recently is that I haven't taken much time to sharpen the blade. I haven't taken much time to brush up on things and to have new examples for you guys when I'm reading other books. So I'll reference the same novels, I'll reference the same short stories, I'll reference the same uh, anecdotes time and time again, and it makes me feel bad. Uh, especially because I spent so much time in grad school among the short stories, building references, building experiences with short stories, and voices, and writers, etc., etc. So anyway, let's get into things. I'm going to start uh, with uh, the best, uh, which is not, ironically, the best. I have three Best American Short Story collections, and again, I apologize, everything is mirrored here. Uh, someone offered me a suggestion on how to record uh, on an Android in a non-mirrored fashion. It does not exist on this phone. Someone offered me uh, advice on a software. That software is made by the same people that do TikTok. I don't trust them. I don't trust any of that stuff. Uh, so uh, you'll have to read backwards. These are uh, entries from the Devil's Library. They're all backwards. So I have three... American Short Story Entries 1. Actually, there's two books here that I haven't read anything from. Uh, so one that I absolutely love, one that I absolutely hate, and one from which I have read nothing at all. We'll start with one that I absolutely hate. 2017, The Best American Short Stories, compiled by Meg Wolitzer. I did reviews for, I believe three of these short stories here on the channel. I was going to make a, a series out of it. Uh, I was going to take it upon myself to really go through short stories, the best American short stories of a given year, that year being 2017, and say, hey, let's make a series of this because I think that short stories are something that are underplayed in the general reading populace, especially given all of the literary acumen that lies therein. But these sucked. These were terrible. Even the one from T.C. Boyle, Are We Not Men, which I love T.C. Boyle. This short story sucked. It was awful. Then we went to God's Work, I believe. 
can I see it here? God's Work, which was very, very try-hard. Uh, and he, I got a scathing review from me. Um, was that the last one I reviewed? I thought I did three. Did I, did, did I do a small sacrifice for an enormous happiness? I read it, and it was bad. It was just boring. I don't know if I ever reviewed it. Well, I'll be. I read Arcadia, too. But I don't remember anything about it. This one sucked. Uh, Meg Wolitzer and he is Heidi Pitlor's the yeah Heidi Pitlor's the series advisor. Uh, Meg Wolitzer, your taste as an editor sucks. Awful, miserable stuff. Boring and try hard. Uh, the short stories that I read from that have no authorial control. I would say it was as if. Um, it, it read a lot like, all of them read a lot like propaganda. Uh, just, uh, here, I am the writer, here is what I'm doing, you should see this in this short story. So the next one, uh, I read The Best American Short Stories compiled by Elizabeth Strout while, uh, 2013, while I was in grad school and had a really good time with it. Uh, this is, I read it Four of these short stories were assigned for one of my classes, and uh, then I went ahead and read the rest of them. Um, Charles Baxter is in here, which kind of sucks. Charles Baxter always kind of sucks, but he gets put into Tin House. Uh, Miss Laura is in here from Juno Diaz. Absolute legend of a short story, Miss Laura. Um, Lori Moore's Referential which reads a lot like, like um, Signs and Symbols? Signs and Symbols by Dostoevsky, is it? One of those Russians wrote Signs and Symbols, and it reads um, a lot like that, as if it is a, uh, a reinterpretation of that short. You, you just have to read it and uh, go from there. It, it really does, it really, really well done. Um, the Simplica Girl Diaries appears in this from George Saunders, of course. Uh, Ritharians was a really good one. There was another one in here that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, I wrote, at the end of all of our classes in grad school, we were supposed to review the professor. At the end of this class, I wrote, uh, so... Mark, if you're watching this, I know you're not because you're not really into literature. I wrote a review, his review, with all of the stories from here that we should have read instead of the ones that he assigned. As well as another short story collection and all of the um, short stories we should have read from there except for the one that he assigned. So that is uh, The Best American Short Stories 2013. It is a very solid collection. If you have the chance to pick it up for cheap, as it is now nearly a decade old, it is seven years old, it is definitely worth picking. Ooh, we are probably a month from the 2021, are we? Or is it 2020? Are they a year ahead like Madden, or are they right on? I can't remember. But, uh, no, they must be right on, because 2017 was in 2017. No, 2017 came out in late 2017, so we should be getting 2020. I don't know. Anyway, doesn't matter. Uh, so 2013 was a pretty solid collection. It is worth picking up. There are a wide array of topics and voices therein. Uh, the one that I have not read at all is The Best American Short Stories 2015, compiled by T.C. Boyle, author of The Harder They Come. T.C. Boyle is an absolute madman. Um... If you haven't read any T.C. Boyle, I highly, highly recommend it. Um, he is someone, his writing is writing, so I'm going to be getting eventually on the channel, I know, I make promises, I make promises, sue me, of uh, my top 25 novels, 50 short stories, and 100 poems. Um, T.C. Boyle's San Miguel is definitely in that top five. I got to figure out where I'm going to put it. Um, I I don't recognize any of the names in here. I don't recognize any of the names in here. Uh, Kevin Canty. I don't know why I know Kevin Canty. Is he in the? I think he might be in the 2017 edition as well. Anyway, 
Uh, there's that. Next, since we mentioned Simplica Girl Diaries, why don't we jump into George Saunders himself. This is 10th of December. There is a review for, I believe, all but one short story from this collection here on the channel. And hell, I like this collection so much, I might go back and do them all a second time. I want to go back, I want to redo my short story review process, and I want to make it something meatier, something that is not just me sitting in front of the camera. I want to do it sort of like, so I did uh, In the Tall Grass with Ernest Hemingway, I, I did three episodes of that a couple years ago, got to get back to that. I want to do something like I did there, but a little bit more production value. I think that uh, this corner of the internet, my channels in particular, are missing production value. I think there's other stuff that I can do, uh, and I got to get better at it. So, 10th of December is an amazing collection of short stories. It is probably my my favorite short story collection from a single author that is not post career, right? So you could pick. There are, I believe, 10 short stories here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You could go through and you could pick 10 short stories from Hemingway um, after his career, and I would like that book better than this. If you pick the right short stories, you could do the same with another. If you took a couple George Saunders from other collections and a couple from here, I would like that better probably. Uh, but as far as a single outing, from a short story writer, start to finish, this is the best that I have ever read. And they are all, actually, not all, but most of them, pretty long short stories. I mean, you're looking at um, 20 and 30 page short stories on some of these. Uh, Victory Lap is 26 pages. Escape from Spiderhead is 30 some odd pages. Al Roosten's nearly 20. Simplica Girl Diaries is 60 pages. Um, so yeah, you're looking at meaty short stories. Home is 40 pages almost. 10th of December is a long one too. 215 through uh, 251. So you're looking at a 30 some odd page short story there as well. 36 pages. Um, this is a short story collection that is, the thing that I have to say about this, Tenth of December is a wonderful blend of funny and sad. Each one of these stories has a very sad core and very funny characters, which is one hell of a thing. I'm going to tell you a little bit of a story that shaped me a little bit as a man. 2015, when I moved into this apartment, it was, I believe, early fall. And no, it was, yeah, no, early fall. So the evening time was still fairly warm, but at night it got real cold. So I had my windows open, but I had a nice blanket. So it was all right. It was that nice middle ground, you know? Around one in the morning, I hear just like that pop, 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 pop. I shoot out of bed. I do the thing that every white guy from every horror film does when there's something wrong. What was that? I should go inspect. And I bolted out of my front door. What that was, was a kid getting shot in the McDonald's parking lot right outside my apartment. Um, it turns out what happened was he was with his friends. They were all high school football players. They think there were drugs involved, a bad, a bad drug deal involved. And they took him to McDonald's, popped him in the car, shoved him out, drove off. I tell that story because a few of my other neighbors at the time <coughs> raced down there to that parking lot as well. And these people... The other people that were down there, crackheads. And I don't say the term lightly. I don't mean it to make fun of them. Absolute crackheads. Not only were they crackheads, they were absolutely off the rocker at the time. Um, 
And here's a kid. Here, th this is the reason I'm telling the story. This kid is shot like four times in the chest. Doesn't have a hope in the world. But he's still alive. And there's this high off her rocker crackhead lady who swears up and down that she knows CPR. I don't know any CPR. So I'm figuring maybe she actually does. Maybe she's been a teacher or something and she had to learn it. I don't know. Very sad core to that story. But if it wasn't a true story, how funny would that be? A crackheaded, uh, a high crackheaded lady giving somebody CPR, right? But it was these, it still toys with me how intense that scene was. Because imagine your final moments on this earth and you're looking that lady in the eyes. And that's what's going on for you. You know? Boy, that got real heavy real fast. Um, this story, short story collection, 10th of December, Simplica Girl Diaries, like I said, is an absolute legend of a short story. Um, where are we at here? Styx is pretty good. Puppy's pretty good. Escape from Spiderhead is amazing. Al Rooston is real funny. My, Ch My Chivalric Fiasco is pretty good. And 10th of December itself is, uh, were it in a different short story collection, 10th of December would be the standout piece. But here it is, Simplica Girl Diaries. Uh, so that's that. I'm sorry that I put myself in a weird mood and I told a weird story. Uh, really took the air out of things. Here is another short story collection from George Saunders in Persuasion Nation. This was uh, subpar. Uh, a lot of funny stuff going on here, a lot of interesting stuff, but it was not. It was my second short story collection from George Saunders after 10th of December, after having already read Sea Oak as well. So I had high expectations, and this did not meet them. Um, I Can Speak is pretty good. Christmas was pretty good. In Persuasion Nation was all right. I think that's it, right? Yeah. So three pretty good short stories in here. The rest, uh, I feel like The Red Bow was really good, but I don't remember it. Uh, it is a 16-page short story, so if it was any good, it was brief for Saunders' sake. So that is uh, In Persuasion Nation by George Saunders. Again, I think it's absolutely worth having. If you can find it on the cheap, pick it up. Anytime... You can read Saunders. It's definitely worth putting in the time and the effort because, especially if you're a writer, because George Saunders for a writer is an absolute master's class on voice. Trust me, I've had a lot of master's classes. None of them were as good as reading a short story collection from George Saunders. So, yeah, that is In Persuasion Nation. I don't remember why this picture is on the front of it, but it makes sense with one of the short stories. My third and final short story collection from the mercurial George Saunders is Civil War Land in Bad Decline. Now, I have read Civil War Land in Bad Decline. Does this have Sea Oak in it? No, is this only... Great God. There's only four short stories in here, I think. Let me see here. What are we doing? What are we doing? What are we doing? Civil War Land of Bad Decline, Isabel, Wavemaker Falters, The 400 Bound CEO, Offloading Mrs. Schwartz, Downtrodden, Mary Failed Campaign of Terror, Bounty. Okay, so there's six or seven. Um, the only one of these that I have read is Civil War Land in Bad Decline. It is absolutely worth reading. Um, I don't like it as much as I like Simply Girl Diaries. I don't like it as much as I like Sea Oak. I don't like it as much. I don't like it as much as I like Escape from Spiderhead. I don't think I like it as much as I like 10th of December. But I think when all is said and done for Saunders, Civil War Land in Bad Decline might be 
the one for which he is most remembered. I think that there's going to be a little bit of seasoning put on that short story with time, and that might be the one for which he is most remembered. Uh, let's go to other authors. Short story collections from other authors. First, selected stories from O. Henry. I bought this in my younger and infinitely more pretentious days because I, I had read The Gift of the Magi in school at some point. And I thought, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's pretty good. But there's another one I've read. But I can't remember the title. Anyway, Gift of the Magi is a, it's a stereotype short story now. It is a, a short story that um, will be given to you in the same breadth that is... Um, Edgar Allan Poe poetry. Someone says, oh, you like poetry? Have you ever read The Raven? It's going to be one of those. Uh, people who are not quite close enough, I think, to short stories to enjoy nuance uh, will really gravitate towards something that has been written by O. Henry because of the deft moves of character and plot through which O. Henry will put you. Uh, that said, I think I've got this right. Oh, Henry was a pharmacist and he had to give up pharmacy and leave town because he was stealing drugs, maybe something like that. I can't remember exactly, but it was an interesting story. I think it's Oh, Henry. Um, but yeah, so I don't know if this is worth reading all the way through or not. You know, given time, I'm going to make another promise. I'd like to read through everyone's short stories. I'd like to nail down an actual review process and go short story by short story through all of American letters. Not going to get there, but worth having goals, right? Next, bet you didn't know Kurt Vonnegut was a short story writer. Herein, I have Kurt Vonnegut Armageddon in retrospect. Kurt Vonnegut actually penned one of the most brilliant short stories, probably of all time, Cyrano de Bergerac. It's not in here, I don't think. No, this is, I think this was a collection collection, as in, these were short stories that he wrote around the same time and published as a unit versus collected short stories from him. But I think that's how this worked. Uh, I think they were published posthumously, perhaps. I, I don't remember exactly. Uh, I, ooh, I have my borders receipt still in the book. Normally, uh, when I buy one book at a time, I use the receipt as a bookmark. Uh, but yeah, this was... Um, if you enjoy Kurt Vonnegut novels, this is absolutely worth a turn. If you do not enjoy Kurt Vonnegut novels, this might still be good for you. So I think Kurt Vonnegut novels are Kurt Vonnegut turned up to 11. The Kurt Vonnegut short stories are short enough that there isn't enough time for the Kurt Vonnegutness to bug the living hell out of you. So, um, for example, Cat's Cradle. In Cat's Cradle, there are large swaths of the novel where you don't really give a damn what's going on because Kurt Vonnegut's just being way too Kurt Vonnegut. In his short stories, he doesn't get the chance, he doesn't get the freedom to give you little snippets of things that the auth that the writer, not the character, not the authorial voice, not the uh, uh, narrator, the writer himself is telling you this part doesn't really matter, but I'm going to tell you anyway. He doesn't really get that opportunity in his short stories. So uh, Kurt Vonnegut, Armageddon in retrospect. This was the first short story collection from a single writer that I ever read. Um, which is shameful to announce because it was
published in, what are we at here? 2008. Yeah. So I was a grown-ass man. Uh, 85, 95, 05, 23. Um, that said, Slaughterhouse-Five was an important novel for me because I read it, I believe, on a Christmas break. Either a Christmas break or a spring break. When all of my reading for school had beaten the hell out of me. And after I finished it, I raced right out and tried to find something else by Kurt Vonnegut. Um, this was sitting on the New Arrivals shelf. Me, not knowing anything about Kurt Vonnegut, I didn't know. And this, was, this wasn't pre-internet age. I mean, there was still Wikipedia and stuff. But it wasn't like you could just sit down and find out everything about... I mean, 2008, it's weird to think... The internet as we know it wasn't really the internet as we know it until 2013-ish, as far as I can tell. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, I am a Luddite, as we all know. But I, I went into the borders up in St. Joseph, Missouri. And this was on the sort of new arrivals and suggested shelf. The, one of those little displays, you know. And this was sitting there, so I just grabbed it up and loved it. I absolutely loved it. I think I read this in a couple days as well. And um, one of the bad things about having a, a YouTube channel is that I don't really um, get the opportunity to passion read something like that. You know, I've got a 40 hour a, work, a week job. I try not to get any fatter than I already am. Uh, maybe throw in a little bit of family time, but who wants to do that? You know, um, things like that. So by the time you get around to reading, it's like, God, I really got to do my stuff for the channel. Um, at some point, I'll get back to that. I, I, I won't have work or family anymore. I'll just shoo them to the side, right? Uh, but anyway, yeah, definitely worth uh, picking up if you enjoy Kurt Vonnegut. Maybe worth picking up if you don't so much enjoy Kurt Vonnegut. If Kurt Vonnegut, um, if you enjoy... If you enjoy Wikipedia articles about Kurt Vonnegut novels better than you enjoy the novels themselves, it's worth picking up. Next... Make Something Up, Stories You Can't Unread, from Chuck Palahniuk. This is not good. It's not good. I had picked it up um, so hopeful. Do I have another short story collection from Chuck Palahniuk? Why don't I have the one that I recognize in here? Anyway, I read a few from this. One of the things Chuck Palahniuk is terrible about, in after Fight Club, uh, he even gave a he even gave a uh, an interview one time where he said uh, the guy introduced him and he said uh, I am here with Chuck Palahniuk, author of, and he gave the microphone to Chuck Palahniuk and he goes, Fight Club. That's pretty much it. Um, joke being, yeah, Chuck Palahniuk hasn't been Chuck Palahniuk since Fight Club. Either that or he has been Chuck Palahniuk since Fight Club. And Fight Club is the one where he wasn't really himself. Chuck Palahniuk has a terrible habit of shock jock type writing. And I mean that exactly how it sounds. He will... Look, I'm all for the grotesque. I'm all for body. I'm all for real sons of bitches in literature. I love Bukowski, for example. All the stuff that Bukowski introduces, that, that nasty old man, all the nasty old man that Bukowski introduces to his literature, is for the sake of the literature. A lot of times it feels that Chuck Palahniuk is just pulling other stuff in. Uh, and this is most noticeable in Choke. Choke felt like so many things just thrown on the page that it was ridiculous. Um, but yeah, this was the short story collection. I haven't read all of them. I've only read a few of them. Uh, definitely, I think, if, if you enjoy Polinick's voice, 
this is Polonix voice on full display from what I've read. But um, it does not pack the punch that does Fight Club. So, yeah. I wanted to, I was, I was hoping to, uh, I was hoping to make a series out of this on the channel, but I don't think I can do it. It's just not good. It's just not good. If you want to put all that stuff in there and be good short stories, I'm all for it. Uh, but when it's gratuitous, I don't know that I am because that's all that's in there, right? The, the gratuity becomes the focal point. Uh, it's that way with if you have read Haunted. A lot of his short stories in there are the very same way, which is uh, incredibly disappointing. The first one in there, Knock Knock. Knock Knock is pretty good. My old man, he makes everything into a big joke. What can I say? The old man loves to get a laugh. Growing up, half the time, I didn't have a clue what his jokes were about, but I laughed anyways. Down at the barber shop, it didn't matter how many guys my father let take cuts ahead of him in line. He just wanted to sit there all Saturday and crack people up. Make folks bust a gut. Getting his hair cut was definitely a low priority. He says, stop me if you've heard this one before. The, old, the way my old man tells it, he walks into the oncologist's office and he says, After the chemotherapy, will I be able to play the violin? In response, the oncologist says, It's metastasized. You've got six months to live. And working his eyebrows like Groucho Mark, Marx, tapping the ash from an invisible cigar, my old man says, Six months, he says. I want a second opinion. So the oncologist says, Okay, you've got cancer and your jokes stink. That's the tone for Knock Knock, and it is, that one's definitely worth a read. Knock Knock is worth a read. I think he published that one in Playboy before, years ago, I think, before this came out. But uh, yeah, that's sort of the tone of that short story. But the tone degrades nearly immediately. Uh, next, new sudden fiction. I read this for my flash fiction class in grad school um the are kind of like there's a chuck polnick one in here i can't remember what it's called escort it's pretty good it's all right uh this i really liked steve allman's moscow as well this short this flash fiction collection um joy oh Joyce, 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 light of my light. Joyce Carol Oates. Objects in mirror are closer than they appear. Quite possibly. One of the greatest short stories of all time. And it's a flash fiction. Uh, if you don't know, a lot of... Uh, so a flash fiction is fiction a thousand words or under. A lot of Hemingway could fall into that. Um, there are a lot of really great classic short stories that could fall into that. Uh, but it's really picked up life in the last 20-ish years as a short story form of its own. And New Sudden Fiction is certainly a... Um, it is... Not a great collection, but it might be a great collection of contemporary-ish flash fiction. And it is, uh, I think that if you are looking at becoming prevalent in flash fiction, it is certainly a collection of flash fiction that will give you an idea of what the short, short story form can do. Um... Objects in mirror closer than they appear. I implore you. I implore you. Google that right now and give it a read. I cannot, I cannot implore you enough. This has Stacy Richter, the minimalist, in it. That's pretty good. Uh, Robert Olin Butler, Seven Pieces of Severance. I don't like Robin Olin Butler, but we got to talk to him in grad school. One of my professors, the professor for this class, Kelly, if you're watching this and now you're not, hello. Um, we got a, uh, it was like a Zoom call. This was way back in 2013. It was like a Zoom call. And um, we got to talk to him. He was, uh, 
one of those guys that takes himself really seriously, but that's okay. He, he gets to do that. He's in. Uh, he's an anthologized writer. Tobias Wolf is in here. Powder. Um, definitely worth picking up if you were trying to get better with f flash fiction as a form. Speaking of, Joyce Carol Oates, my love. American Short Stories, the Oxford Book of American Short Stories, uh, edited by Joyce Carol Oates. This is another one that I will eventually go short story by short story through. While I have read a great deal of the short stories compiled herein, I think I've only read a couple in here, as in, in this, this book itself. Uh, it's got Rip Van Winkle by Washington Irving, uh, Edgar Allan Poe, The Telltale Heart, Herman Melville, The Paradise of Bachelors, and The Tartarus of Maids. I can never say that. Uh, Samuel Clemens, Cannibalism in the Cars, Kate Chopin, The Storm, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, The Yellow Wallpaper. There's a review for that on the channel. Stephen Hart Crane, The Little Regiment. Sherwood Anderson, The Strength of God, Jack London, In a Far Country. Uh, William Carlos Williams, The Girl with a Pimply Face, which I have never read, but I've always wanted to because I've always wanted to know how William Carlos Williams translates into short story. Um, H.P. Lovecraft, The Rats in the Walls. I recently read one of Ernest Hemingway's short or poems, Andrea, thank you for that. Um, Ernest Hemingway wrote three stories and ten poems or something like that. And I, I mentioned on a recent video that I'd never read any of them. Andrea um, DM'd me one of the uh, poems from Hemingway. Uh, strange. It was very strange. It was very, very strange. Uh, F. Scott Fitzgerald, An Alcoholic Case, which I read in here. William Faulkner, That Evening Sun, which I read in here. Uh, Ernest Hemingway, Hills Like White Elephants. Uh, probably the most notorious of Ernest Hemingway's short stories. I don't think it is the best Ernest Hemingway short story, but uh, absolutely one that you've got to read. Uh, the Lottery by Shirley Jackson. There Will Come Soft Rains by Ray Bradbury. A Late Encounter with the Enemy by Flannery O'Connor. The School by Donald Bartholomew. There is a review for The School on the channel. Defender of the Faith, which I read in here by Philip Roth. There is a review for that on the channel as well, and that was my introduction to Philip Roth. Uh, the Mud Below by Annie Prue. Heat by Joyce Carol Oates. Joyce had to put herself in here, didn't she? Um, I've never read Heat, but I've enjoyed everything that I liked from Joyce Carol Oates. Under the Radar by Richard Ford. Um, I have not read Under the Radar, but I have read Richard Ford, and we'll get to that in a little bit. The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien, The Reach by Stephen King, Filthy Things by T.C. Boyle, Today Will Be a Quiet Day from Amy Hempel, um, How to Become a Writer by Lori Moore, which is there is, for which there is a review on the channel as well, uh, Hell Heaven by Jumpa Lahiri, Jumpa Lahiri, Edison, New Jersey by Juno Diaz. I have not read uh, Edison, New Jersey from Juno Diaz. Uh, but everything that I have read from Juno Diaz is enjoyable, including his novel, which was one of the very first novel reviews here on the channel. I think it's called Drown. It's something with water. I can't remember exactly. Uh, but speaking of speaking of Joyce Carol Oates, Dear Husband. This is the other one that I have not read. I have not read Short Stories 2015, and I have not read anything from Dear Husband, which was picked up uh, at a library sale. Oh, is this not Short Stories? This is Short Stories, isn't it? Yeah, Stories. So wh why isn't there a table of contents? There's no table of contents. What are you doing? It just said part one. Joyce, you're letting me down. Joyce Carol Oates, by the way, looks like I have always imagined um, Emily Dickinson to look. But, I say that because there's a picture of her in the back here. You see that there? I imagine that a an older Emily Dickinson would look like that. The Emily Dickinson that you see oftentimes... Don't think there's one in here. No, there's not one in the complete... The Emily Dickinson, the uh, image of Emily Dickinson that you see oftentimes... That is the um, was the only known picture of Emily Dickinson is apparently her between the ages of seventeen and nineteen 
uh, but there has surfaced within the last five years or so a picture of, I think it's her niece, niece, cousin, maybe it's a cousin. Uh, there is a picture of her cousin, known to be of her cousin, with a mysterious woman. This mysterious woman is now thought to be Emily Dickinson. So we have a peek at Emily Dickinson in, I believe, her late 20s. Um, doesn't look anything at all like uh, Joyce Carol Oates, but it's just interesting. You know, we have this one picture of who I would say is the greatest American poet ever my favorite poet of all time one picture of her as a 17 year old a 17 year old who i believe had had pinned none of the poems that we know from emily dickinson um so it's not a picture of the writer who was emily dickinson but we have this other picture of um if you can find that other picture I think it really is her. Like, they've done studies that say, you know, the bone structure between the 17-year-old and the 17 or 18-year-old and this woman in her late 20s matches. She's really got shit starter written all over her face. Um, so I think that is her. But uh, anyway, Dear Husband, stories from Joyce Carol Oates. I thought that it was, I think that, praise for the stories of Joyce Carol Oates. Yeah, this has to be a short story collection. But it doesn't make sense that there's no table of contents. Joyce, you little hellion, you. Uh, from 2009. Someone tell me in the comments if you know. Here we go. Here it is. Contents. Panic special, the blind sided daughter. Blah, 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 blah. Cuddy Sark. Joyce, what are you doing writing a? What are you doing writing a short story about Cuddy? Golly. One in part two, the first short story in part two is called Dear Joyce Carol. I wonder if these are just stories, not necessarily fictional. Uh, is Cuddy your favorite drink, Joyce? I'll be. Let me tell you, I had some run ins with Cuddy uh, when I was most definitely an alcoholic. I would post up at the Buffalo Wild Wings after work but before passing out drunk and I would drink two or three tall Boulevard wheats. I would drink two or three, uh, whiskeys, whiskey on the rocks. I would have a J and B on the rocks because it reminded me of American psycho. I would have a, uh, a straight Henny and I would end with a martini, but every once in a while, I have vague memories of ordering Cuddy. Um, maybe those aren't even real. Next, we've got great short stories. This will come with a, uh, a bit of a warning. Anytime you find yourself in the ownership of a brand spanking new collection of short stories that promises to be great, know that it is not great. If you have, for example, 50 great short stories, know that those were the 50 greatest short stories that Bantam could buy for cheap. <laughs> um, so I made it all the way through 50 great short stories, great American short stories, and I think I even made it all the way through great short stories, quick reads by great writers. Did I? I think so. No, I didn't. That's a lie. That is an absolute lie. Uh, anyway, 50 great short stories. Anytime you get something like this, it's not going to be something that knocks your socks off, but it's going to be something that is worth the read. Um, so this has, for example, Three Day Blow from Ernest Hemingway. ha. <laughs> No one's choice of the greatest Hemingway short story. But there are absolutely things in here which are, if you had never read A Three Day Blow, it would be absolutely worth getting in a 50 short story collection. Um, obviously, The Lottery from Shirley Jackson, The Mask of the Red Death from Edgar Allan Poe, The Man Higher Up by O. Henry, 
That Evening's Sun from uh, William Faulkner. So I think that um, short story, collect A Good Man is Hard to Find. Great short story. Collections like this, while they may not be the most engaging, the Chrysanthemums by John Steinbeck, that is one of the greatest short stories of all time. While they may not be from start to finish the most engaging, I think that they're absolutely worth the investment. They're absolutely worth the time. And I think, so, I made the argument that old George Saunders is probably a better investment for a writer than a reader. I would make the opposite claim about books like this. These are probably better for readers than writers. That is, if you are passionate about literature in an academic sense, short story collections like this are probably more useful for you than if you are a writer. I think it cut out on me. Uh, that, that said, this is absolutely useful to you as a, a writer, just not as useful to you as it is taking writing and literature in an academic sense. Um, there's not a whole lot in here that's going to knock your socks off from a stylistic point of view, besides the ones that, that you know anyway. Um, those are the ones that you can, you can really count on. Uh, the Chrysanthemums, for example, A Good Man is Hard to Find. Great American Short Stories, edited by Paul Negri. This is, uh, Paul Negri's pretty good. Uh, this is one that I read from start to finish as well. Oh, awesome. Peter Gabriel. I went and saw Peter Gabriel in concert in Kansas City. Uh, I was the youngest person there and the only one that didn't smell like marijuana. So this has Bartleby in it. This has a Telltale Heart. Young Goodman Brown, which, by the way, if you go to study literature and you have a stodgy old white man professor, um, which odds are running out that you will, there's almost none, but if you do, he will make you read uh, Young Goodman Brown. Uh, Luck of Roaring Camp by Bret Hart. The Gooford Grapevine. The Gooford Grapevine by Charles Waddell Chestnut is one of the most confoundingly racist things you'll ever read. It is a weird type of racist. Uh, it is a... Uh, um, it's difficult to get through because of the... It's just difficult to get through. Um, <laughs> I dare you to read it. I defy you. I implore you. I implorably defy you to read it. To Build a Fire by Jack London. Uh, yeah, there's some pretty good short stories in here. We have three left, uh, including my Bible of short stories. Great American Short Short Stories. This is one that I, I haven't even picked this up. Now that I'm looking at it, I haven't even picked this up. I thought while this was sitting on my bridge that I had read it. Or sitting on my bridge, sitting on my shelf. An occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge is where I got is from whence bridge came. Um, anything that's... Anything that's really sticking out to me here, Sanctuary by Nella Larson, The White Silence by Jack London, uh, Inspired Choices, The Furnished Room by O. Henry, I have read that, The Cask of Amontillado from Edgar Allan Poe, of course there's Edgar Allan Poe, The Notorious, the notorious Jumping Frog of Cal Calaveras, Calaveras County. If I am not mistaken, the Notorious Jumping Frog of Calaveras County was Mark Twain's very first publication, I think. Um, maybe I'll get into that eventually. Down to two. Uh, the one that I'm going to, the penultimate book in this collection that I will be introducing goes back to collections from a single writer, but not the entire collection of. And this, this fits in here because there is... Uh, there is, there are fictional short stories herein. Shirley Jackson, let me tell you. This is, I've read five stories from this. 
Shirley Jackson is so amazing. Shirley Jackson is, um, the way I often, I don't know if I've ever described her this way on the channel, but the way that I often find myself thinking about her um, in media res, she's very slick. Shirley Jackson is very slick, a very slick writer. She gets away with things. Uh, she, she, she pulls the wool over your eyes after she asks you if you'd like some wool. That's the best way I can describe it. Would you like some wool? Here you go. Um, she is just amazing. Everything I've read from her. Everything I've read from her. Um, we've always lived in the castle. Um, the Haunting of Hill House. The Lottery. There's another one of her short stories that's really good. Paranoia. Still Life. Still Life with Teapot and Students. The Arabian Nights. The Arabian Nights. Such an interesting short story. There's so much going on in that. Um, Mrs. Spencer in the Overons. And I read It Isn't the Money I Mind. Uh, I stopped reading because I'm going to absolutely put this book on the channel. Short story by short story. I don't have the choice. It ha I, I, It's so good. It's so good. Trust me. It is absolutely worth picking up. You owe it to yourself to pick this up. You owe it to yourself to read. If you have never read Shirley Jackson, trust me. Just trust me. Absolutely worth it. Finally, my Bible. My Bible. The Bible of short stories. The Scribner Anthology of contemporary short fiction, 50 North American stories since 1970. There were two or three short stories from this prescribed to me while I was in grad school. This collection, magnificent. Um, Sarah Cole, A Type of Love Story by Russell Banks. A sneaky short story. The School from Donald Bartholomew. I can't say enough. The Disappeared by Charles Baxter. Sucked. Caviar by T.C. Boyle. Really good. Um, Nilda by Juno Diaz. We Didn't by Stuart Dybeck. Dybeck. If you've never read We Didn't by Stuart Dybeck, don't give me your attitude. Just go do it. Because I'll slap the shit out of you. A Real Doll by A.M. Holmes. A Real Doll by A.M. Holmes is a short story to which I owe, owe so much. Owe so much. Stone Animals by Kelly Link. Girl by Jamaica Kincaid. The Kind of Light That Shines on Texas by Reginald McKnight. That is a short story that is a deceptive slice of life. It is a deceptive slice of life, and I say deceptive because you will read it, and you'll think, oh, that was a neat little short story. And days later, you will find yourself thinking about it. Um, sea Oak by George Saunders. Two Kinds by Amy Tan. Two Kinds by Amy Tan. is a short story that it shocks me how much I like every time I read it. Uh, sea Oak by George Saunders. Just so good. Where's the, um, did I say Communist by Richard Ford? I don't think I did. Communist by Richard Ford is uh, a short story. Communist by Richard Ford is a short story that is absolutely worth reading from a, it's a short story that could absolutely, Communist by short story is as if Ernest Hemingway wrote Two Kinds by um, Amy Tan. That's what I'll say. Communist by Richard Ford is as if Ernest Hemingway wrote Two Kinds by Amy Tan. Yeah. Um, there are so many good short stories in this collection. 
and they are all different. This is one that I read cover to cover, and I'm absolutely glad that I took that time. It is uh, 650 ish pages of short stories, 647 pages of short stories, uh, and it's one that you will read and you will mark up. But that's it. That is what I have for the short stories. Uh, as far as the short stories go here on Strip Cover Lit, my uh, bookshelf tour of short stories, and I feel in my soul like there's some short story books looking at me from my shelves, cursing me out. Uh, but I will be back with another portion of my bookshelf later.